Hello, Archie Dunlop here with Talking Astrology with Archie on Thursday, August the 22nd, 2024. Today, the sun moves into Virgo. OK, it might move into Virgo tomorrow if you're in Australia, New Zealand or East Asia early tomorrow. But, you know, overall, we can regard today as being the beginning of the sun in Virgo season. And Virgo is one of those signs that sometimes has a bad press. I mean, I kind of feel that uh, it runs in cycles. Uh, you know, it's like different signs become uh, un unpopular at particular times. You know, I remember when I was doing astrology classes, when I was uh, learning astrology, I went through this whole year. It was, a, it was a certificate course in the 80s. And, you know, right at the end of the class, this woman who I never talked to in the class, I didn't, I, mean, I might have talked to her a bit, but I didn't really know anything. She turned around to me and she said, I hate Geminis. And yeah, Geminis can get a bad press. I think in the 1980s, there was a time when Geminis were everyone's worst sign. So that that's then there are other signs that, that sometimes come in for criticism. Uh, Scorpios. Scorpios often have a, have a difficult reputation. And then there's Virgos. I think Virgos do get a do get a uh, somewhat sort of bad deal. But uh, I thought that uh, today I would sort of look at what it means to have the sun in Virgo with examples. Now, these examples <laughs> are going to be examples I find interesting. So it may be that some of my examples are not particularly nice people. And if you're a Virgo, you might feel that... Uh, I'm persecuting you because I'm looking at charts of unpleasant Virgos. But I think you do have to you do have to understand it, it isn't they are extreme examples. I, I hope you don't take it to heart. Another thing to bear in mind is that the sun sign is more important in male charts than the moon sign. And so a sun in Virgo is likely to describe a man more than it describes a woman. So a woman with sun in Virgo, she's quite likely to, to project her sun in Virgo, and she it could well be that she's we, we can uh, use her moon sign as a way of describing her much better than her sun sign. So I'm just hoping that you, you don't take it to heart what I say about sun in Virgo, and you will understand that I am taking it perhaps... A somewhat extreme example. So what I want to do now is look at the astrology and the I Ching for today. Now just a reminder that I would be really really grateful if you were to like this video. Of course that assumes that you do like it. If you don't like it then I suppose you have to dislike it. Uh, it can't be helped. And if uh, you're not subscribed and you like this video, then, yeah, I would be really, really happy if you were to subscribe because it, it does make a big difference to me and I don't think it costs you anything. So, OK, so let's look at what's happening today. Uh, we do have some people here in case you're curious. There is um, Prince Harry. He's a Virgo. We've got the Emperor Caligula was a Virgo. And, you know, my apologies for including Caligula, but in some ways there's something very Virgoan about him, but I will be discussing that later. Then we've got, in France, we've got uh, Jean de Bardella, the, uh, the French sort of right-wing politician, uh, who's very young, who I suppose aspires to very high office at some stage in his career. And we've got British Prime Minister Keir Starmer. So you might take the view that he's... No, he's not really like Caligula, is he? But there is a tyrannical streak to Virgos. There really is. And I will be um, talking about that. OK, so... Um, in terms of what's, what's happening at the moment, the moon is in Aries. That's... Uh, 
possibly the main thing happening. We've got the moon very much in Aries, very much uh, in the middle of the sign, so it doesn't really matter where you are. The moon is, is certainly solidly in Aries, okay. The moon, if you're in Australia or New Zealand, it might not move into Aries until late morning, but um, still, I think we can pretty much regard it as an, a moon in Aries day. And so with the moon in Aries, we perhaps should be feeling in the mood for taking action. If there's something on our mind, we need to talk about it. We need to tell people about it. If there's something we want to do, then, then we might feel that now is the time. And there may actually be certain pressure to act because you'll notice that the moon is moving towards a conjunction of, or in fact, sorry, it's moving away from a conjunction of the North Node in New York, but very much have moon conjunct the North Node. And so with moon conjunct the North Node in Aries, we can see this in, in a couple of ways. Um, it can just be about connections, because the North Node is not just about karma. It just be, can be about how you relate to people. And the North Node is fortunate. It's of the nature of Jupiter. The south Node is sort of more of the nature of Saturn. So I think that does give the Moon a boost. And I think it allows us to meet new people, if that's what we want. And also, from a karmic perspective, I don't really like using the word karmic. Um, it's kind of, I don't know, it, it's, it seems a bit sloppy to me to talk about karma and astrology. Uh, but uh, it's what we're supposed to be doing. It's a way forward for us. And so with North Node conjunct the Moon in Aries, in many cases, it is the right thing to be impulsive. If we see that something needs to be done or we need to react or we need to show our feelings, then that absolutely could be appropriate. So if we see something that is wrong or is unjust, it is a time to be talking about it, to um, perhaps expressing our anger in a controlled kind of way. We don't want to take things too far. And aside from that, the sun moves into Virgo today. You can see New York time at noon, sun is at zero degrees, 10 minutes Virgo. To be precise, sun goes into Virgo at five minutes to four in the afternoon in the UK. So late morning in New York, the sun goes into Virgo, uh, I suppose, mid, eight around, what What would that be, uh, 5 to 11 in, in the morning in New York, so that would be 5 to 8 in the morning on the West Coast, even earlier if you're in Alaska or Hawaii, so in the Americas, it really is a sun in Virgo day, in uh, Europe, the last half of the day, late afternoon, uh, the sun is in Virgo, and yeah, it might not go into Virgo until tomorrow if tomorrow morning, fairly early tomorrow morning in Australia or New Zealand. So that is a big theme for the day. And you know, it is such a big changeover, the sun moving from Leo to Virgo. You know, Leo is all about sort of getting attention and the self and uh, being noticed and Virgo is, in a way, sort of more sensible. You've moved from a far sign to an earth sign. Uh, Virgo focuses on details. Virgo has a certain modesty to it in many cases. Uh, not in all cases. Caligula is a Virgo, was a Virgo. I don't think he was particularly modest. Um, and... There is also the idea of service with Virgo. It's perhaps is a time to be doing things not for ourselves, but for other people and for the community. And when the sun moves into Virgo, it straight away makes a quincunx, an 150 degree aspect to Pluto. So sun-Pluto quincunx can be 
I would have said a little bit difficult. You know, we are trying very hard to be ourselves, even though the sun is in Virgo. But there is an overwhelming force out there. We know it exists. We know it, it has to be taken into account. But we could feel a little bit overwhelmed by it. And we could start to sort of notice the details about this, all the details about why we can't do what we're doing. And uh, that might bring us to a point where we feel we can't do anything. But that's, of course, not the right approach because with a, with a quincunx, you're dealing with an energy that is uh, difficult. And it's actually difficult to place, you know, as I... Like to say with quinc with quincunxes, you know, when I was learning astrology, my first year at, at an astrolog doing an astrology course in the mid eighties, the astrology teacher, he said that a quincunx was like a bent pipe. It was like a huge pipe, and it had a kink in it, and it but had this completely weird shape, and. He was saying, and the question is, what do you do with this pipe? What do you do with this thing? And he said, you know, it's really difficult to place it. It doesn't make sense. And he said, with the quincunx, the, the, the challenge is to find where to put it, because there actually is a place where it totally fits. And so perhaps with this sun, quincunx, Pluto, um, we was, uh, we, you know, we have to find that place um, the teacher about was his day job. I think was a he was a surveyor. So perhaps it's not surprising that uh, he was into pipes and houses and way. That was his the metaphor he was using. So with the sun quincunx Pluto, there is something rather difficult to um, difficult to deal with, and but not in a kind of traumatic way like a square or an opposition really. Uh, really tense it's just something that doesn't fit and we need to find a place for it and perhaps that is that we have to find a way in which we can be powerful sun quincunx pluto we can't be powerful in normal ways but there is one way we find that way and we can really tune into our power now the sun might be on but might be in virgo but the sun is also conjunct regulus there is a fixed star uh at zero degrees Virgo. Regulus is the royal star. Regulus is about preferment, it's about position, it's about recognition. And so with Sun in Regulus, I think that I think we can uh, benefit from it in terms of getting recognition and getting getting the recognition we deserve. And if there's someone we need to get in touch with who might in some way have a higher status than us, whether it's in society or at work, you might want to write to the king or the president, whatever. That's what Regulus is about. And we shouldn't forget our own ability to have a high status. You know, we might sort of think, oh, it's other people who are more important than us. But what about us? We can be important because the sun is on regulus so there's actually aspect wise there's not a lot happening today i would have said you don't have tons of aspects it's not like monday where we had loads of aspects um we have full moon square uranus and so on and so on and so on yeah but of course just because you have a load of aspects doesn't mean nothing will happen Many people were disappointed or relieved by what happened on Monday. It, it wasn't as the kind of quite the dramatic day that the astrology seemed to promise. Of course, there were particular places of drama, like if you were on a super yacht outside Palermo when there was a hurricane which capsized the yacht and people are still missing. I, I assume, you know, people died, or at least one person died, but, you know, it was, we expect more people to have died. Uh, so that was an example of something happening on Monday. But by and large, I think many people noticed that it was a quiet, quite pleasant day on Monday. And so by contrast, just because there's not a lot happening in terms of the astrology doesn't mean to say there's not going to be drama out there in the real world. And 
Turning to the heliocentric picture, uh, here it is. This is this is the universe when we put the Earth in the center of it all. Sorry, the Sun in the center of it all. Now, on the surface, it doesn't look actually as if anything is happening at all. Okay, we've got Venus opposition Charon, but that's breaking up. That's two degrees away. Venus opposition Charon, you know, I've talked about that. That might be, but, you know, we still feel a certain inclination to do things differently, perhaps to dress differently, uh, to have an unusual style. But I think with Venus opposition Charon, you know, many of us are still going to be aware of other people's suffering and we may be in a position to provide some kind of solution. You know, remember, Charon is the wounded healer, but I don't think that's the main heliocentric event. I would have said that the main heliocentric event is, uh, there's, look at Uranus. You see, Uranus is 13 degrees from about 13 degrees from Mars, and it's about 13 degrees from Jupiter. So we can see that heliocentric Uranus is on the Mars-Jupiter midpoint. And I would have said that could be quite constructive if we handle it correctly. You know, Uranus is about something happening suddenly, unexpectedly, a bit of an earthquake. Mars-Jupiter is uh, a lot of energy. And so the, there is a lot of energy today, which might not be immediately apparent with the Sun in, moving into Virgo. And with Uranus on the Mars-Jupiter, it's perhaps about using a lot of energy because we feel we need to get a result. And that might also be reflected on, in terms of other people's behaviour, uh, what's happening on the global on the global stage, how countries are behaving. Uh, People want things, and people people want things, they want them suddenly and quickly, and they're prepared to put quite a lot of energy into getting them, for better or for worse. But really, that's the only thing happening, the main thing going on today, heliocentrically, uh, Uranus on the Mars-Jupiter midpoint. Okay, uh, let me now turn to the 12 signs. So... These are my forecasts for the 12 signs for today, which is uh, Thursday, August the 22nd, 2024. Aries. Aries, you're feeling better, I would have said. You know, recently you might have felt a bit overwhelmed by it all, and you might have felt that uh, you couldn't really... Uh, do anything he couldn't do much because there were just so many other things to be concerned about and now you've got the moon in your in your sign so with the moon in aries you you're just feeling better and you're feeling you're feeling more connected and it just might feel that you've got your power back and uh, you know, having your power back is just just feels good and you're now starting to be aware of the things you can do and also the moon is not just in aries the moon is making a north making a conjunction to the north node in aries and you know you've got the north node in aries all the time you know the north node is a slow mover and with the north node in aries you probably feel that uh there is a certain obligation to make things happen. You know, it's not an obligation you feel all the time, but it's just there in the background. And so when the moon moves into Aries, it just makes that obligation all the stronger. And so you might suddenly realise that something's wrong, something needs to be said, something needs to be done, and just straight away you will feel the obligation. And... I mean, part of you is thinking, is it really worth it? Do you really want to do it? What about the possibility of causing upset? But I wouldn't worry about that. I think you need to, I think, just go ahead and uh, go ahead and do it. That's that's fine. That's, it's, it's okay. And 
there's always going to be an element of risk. But it's a, it's a social risk that matters. Obviously, you shouldn't be doing anything that has physical risk, no, or financial risk. But it's there's, there's that social risk that you might be thinking about. You may be thinking, well, what are people going to say if I do this? And maybe it will be unfortunate. But honestly, Aries, you can handle it. It's okay. So it, it's a day when I think you do need to get noticed. It it's really is okay to be noticed. And then I suppose you have to consider how are you getting on with other people you all you've already you've already got a situation where your initiatives could cause a, a little bit of upset but can't be helped as they say uh, you you can't make an omelet without breaking eggs isn't that right but venus is continuing to make it square to to mars and this square between venus and mars is effectively exact today but it's exact tomorrow it's exact it's i think it's ex, it's completely exact tomorrow uh i mean i probably should have mentioned this aspect in the introduction um but so so venus is ex, this venus mars square is exact well at 4 20 in the morning london time so if you're in the americas Actually, this Venus Mars square is exact late this evening, so or even mid evening. Uh, so, with this Venus Mars square, it just may be that you have a certain sense that you and someone else don't quite see eye to eye, that you do have perhaps different priorities and. You know, with Venus and Virgo, might represent other people being worried and concerned about things that are of absolutely no interest to you. You just you're just not interested, not at all. Uh, as far as you're concerned, these are petty concerns. You actually need to see the you need to see the big picture, and you want to do stuff that is interesting and is is going to move you forward and you want to be thinking about the future and is it a question of one person being right and another person being wrong i don't think so i think it's great that you are imagining the future and that you want to move from the past to the future as quickly as possible but you do also need to consider um, what other people are saying um, it's uh, it reminds me of what's his name Stockton Rush. So do you remember what's it? Stockton Rush was the guy who was in charge of Ocean Gate. Those people who put the put the submarine uh, down into the Titanic towards the Titanic, and it had some carbon fiber hull, and, and it eventually cracked. And he, what is it? Five people were killed, including him. And, you know, what he said was that safety concerns, being obsessed about safety is just unnecessary, basically. It's just a complete waste of time and it actually gets in the way of progress. Now, I can't remember off the, off the top of my head what Stockton Rush's, uh, what his uh, star sign was I, or, or what his sign was. In fact, that is interesting Stockton Rush, I don't know whether you're I don't know whether you're reading this because you've got an ascendant in Aries or you've got the sun in Aries, but here is uh, Stockton Rush's chart, just a little diversion talking about Aries. But here's Stockton Rush's chart. I don't have his time of birth, but Stockton Rush was born on March the thirty first, nineteen sixty two. So he was very much in Aries. Sun in Aries, not ascendant in Aries, but you can see the Aries, you can see the Aries issue there because Aries wants to think about action, making things happen, the future, and you don't want to have to worry about supposedly irrelevant details about testing something to destruct destruction. It's such a waste of time, isn't it? And so, if you if there is a suggestions that you need to be more careful, 
that you need to go over something again, it's certainly going to make you annoyed. And it may be that the other person is just wasting your time, uh, perhaps. But maybe they're making valid points. So perhaps you should err on the side of caution. And yes, you've got to do things. You've got to do things now. But don't completely ignore what other people are saying. And in terms of relationships in general, whatever the relationship is, I think people's obsession with small details, details that you don't find important, um, just could be a bother. And perhaps you have to be tolerant. Um, Perhaps you just have to um, do things your way. So it's up to you. I mean, you have to decide how how best to deal with this Venus-Mars square. And this Venus-Mars square, yeah, it's exact tonight if you're in the Americas. It will be exact tomorrow. On, on it will be completely exact tomorrow and are we talking again about that venus mars square tomorrow but there is a bonus to the venus mars square that it is going to make you more attractive in some quarters that's how venus mars squares work uh, they are selective in their attractiveness in some places your charms may not be noticed in other in other places your charms will be immediately obvious so perhaps you have to choose where you go in order in order for you to have maximum impact Taurus Taurus you might take the view that you've been quite busy but but right now you want to slow down a little Um, perhaps you just just feel that there's nothing really that you have to do, nothing, and there's nothing perhaps that you even want to do, and uh, that's, uh, I suppose, reasonable. I, I don't think it's going to matter if you. I don't think it's, yeah, I don't think it's really going to matter if you take that approach. I don't think today you will be missed if you, for example decide not to show up to something Um, okay if you've got got a job to go to obviously you've got to show up to that or if you've got an important appointment but in a general social sense I don't think you're going to be missed but I'm not I don't mean that to undermine you I'm just saying that people can just do things in their own way without you and so you mustn't feel that you are essential that your presence is really important uh, because you know, in many cases, if you, you know, you turn up, to, you go somewhere, you meet people and you just feel that you're not really yourself. And you perhaps need time to just think and feel and a little bit of uh, chaos in your life actually might be useful. You know, you don't, it doesn't all have to be laid out straight in front of you. A bit of fuzziness, things not entirely making sense might actually be helpful because it would just give you an opportunity to see things in a different way to have different you know different feelings different experiences but when i say experiences not the kind of experiences that you have to sort of go out into the world to 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 have it's it's all it's all rather private and i think that your your private life today yeah i do think that it is going to be important But we can't escape the fact that the sun is moving into Virgo. You may not feel the sun moving into Virgo straight away, but I think that it could be important. So Virgo is an earth sign and Taurus is an earth sign. So sun moving into Virgo is actually quite a fortunate event you you feel a sense of comfort that uh, you're, uh, I suppose, able to do something that it, you enjoy. And that is actually quite a good reason not to spend too much time worrying about other people. Because if you're worrying about other people, you have to do things their way. And I think today... It's okay to be a little bit selfish. You know, you you mustn't 
listen too much to other people's opinions. You've got something special that you want to achieve, that you want to do, and you can get recognition for it because the sun is actually conjunct regulus, the, the royal star. And so this is about, yes, it's about recognition. It's even about fame, potentially. So with sun and Virgo, just consider what you're good at what you can really do well and you can be a perfectionist but in a in a way that is not boring you know perfectionism and boring are often seen as being in a similar com complex as being related to one another not in this case you you just do something really well well and you focus a lot of attention on it the details do matter whatever you're doing uh Although the sign of Virgo is in Earth signs, and so with Earth signs, sorry, sign in Virgo is in Earth. So when you think about the Earth, you might think about the earthy pursuits, gardening, for example, or cooking. But when we talk about cooking, I'm not talking about cooking as in, oh, you have to cook for other people because they, they need to be fed. It's more about doing something creative in the kitchen. Um, something that something you want to do, something you want to make. So that's something that you could do really well, and also um, also might relate to I don't know the home and garden, garden in particular, doing stuff with plants. You know, seasons are changing. I mean, certainly here in Washington State, it really did does feel over the last few days that autumn is here. And I suppose if autumn is here. I know it's still August, but, you know, I suppose that means that things have to be done in the garden. I don't know what the situation is like on the other side of the world, in Australia, for example. But uh, there are certainly things that you can do that I think that uh, you will get gain great satisfaction from. And another aspect that we do need to consider, Taurus, is Sun, Quincunx, Pluto. And I think the challenge... This, Sun Quincunx Pluto is particularly important if you have a business or you have a job or because Pluto is in quite a high profile part of your chart. Pluto is about you in society, what kind of impression you're having. With the Sun Quincunx Pluto, the challenge here is to take something which is all about you, all about you and what you can do and to connect it with how you are seen in the outside world. So if you have a business, how are you going to engage your creativity? How are you going to turn something, you know, turn something that you're really good at, that you really enjoy doing, into something that is not just practical, but is actually recognised and that other people want? And you have to do it in such a way that you don't compromise yourself, that you're not doing something you don't want to do. So you can see the issue there. But I think that, uh, I think, Taurus, uh, you will find a way if you, if you use your imagination, but uh, don't, don't push yourself. Because fundamentally, it's a day when I suppose you don't, have to be noticed it's not absolutely important to be noticed but it's it's just it's more important to do something that you're good at that you enjoy in your own way than to be recognized for it recognition is, is secondary very secondary so uh, that's your day I, I think today taurus could be quite satisfying and I think today, Taurus, also you could you could have a great sense of self. Gemini. Gemini, you do seem to be a little less of an extrovert than usual. Things are changing. And part of that Gemini might be to do with the fact that the sun is moving into Virgo. So... Sun moving into Virgo, it can be a time when Geminis feel that they need to remove themselves from a fray. You know, 
Gemini's, of course, they enjoy excitement. You know, they they like stimulation. They often are interested in what other people have got to offer, and they certainly have a curiosity to them. But you know, you've, we've had Mercury retrograde for some time now, so Mercury's retrograde now, and with Mercury retrograde. There are certain things that you are having second thoughts about and you're not entirely ready to sort of be out there uh, being very clear about what you want and what you don't want because, frankly, you're probably not sure. And then now the sun moves is moving into Virgo and it just reinforces the idea that there are things you don't know that... Y- You're aware that you don't know them. And at the same time, you don't feel that the answers are out there. The answers may be down there. (laughs) The the answers may be in your home environment, perhaps. uh, in, In your private world. That's where the answers are or it's quite possible your family have the answers don't forget your family your family could be important over the next few weeks and you know you might have under you might be underestimating what what your family actually have to offer because i think they have got have got quite a lot to offer and they may be able to resolve some long-standing issues so that's perhaps where your energy is going, you know, if we talk about what's going on over the next few weeks with the sun moving into Virgo. But we can't ignore the fact that the moon is in Aries. And so it seems to be the case that although fundamentally you you, you really want to step back, short term, it just may be, it just feels that there are people that you need to consider. You need to take them into account and you need to understand what's going on in the social world because things are changing. Things are always changing. And if you ignore what's going on in the social world, you might in the end be kind of out of sync with things. So it might be a sort of good idea, for example, uh, to go to some gathering or, I don't know, Thursday, do people have parties on Thursday? Probably not. But just to be there for people if they want to get in touch with you. It might not, might not be what you want to do, but I think it's probably something you should be doing. I think that uh, some of some of the answers are out there in uh, the social world. I've just contradicted myself. But I think in general, you know, I, I was saying that the real fundamental answers are done, uh, you know, perhaps in your family, in your home. But just short term today, something needs to be resolved a little bit in terms of your social life and your friends and just seeing what they've got to say, getting their opinions about something. Yeah, that's a good point with a a Gemini. Geminis can sometimes not know what kind of opinion they should have. You're thinking, you know, things are changing, but what should you be thinking? How should you be responding to the great issues of the world? And you come up with your own ideas and you're thinking, are those ideas actually correct? Are those ideas conforming with the society in which you live so it actually might be a good idea to try to get an idea about other people's opinions and just see what they see what they say and you you may be surprised and you should perhaps take take that on board and you know speaking as a gemini myself you know i do have opinions about lots of things and you know, I think certainly there have been times in my life when I've decided to seek out other people's opinions and you get an opinion which might be completely different from your own opinion, but it gives you pause for thought. And 
there might be a moment of reconsideration. So, Gemini, don't be too fixed in what you believe and how you're responding to everyday events. You know, there are everyday events happening, whether it's Ukraine, Middle East, US presidential election, the economy, tax, whatever, whatever it is that you're uh, thinking about, it just is a good idea to get other people's opinions. You don't, it doesn't mean you have to accept other people's opinions, but at least you need to know. Because if your opinions are at odds with someone else's opinions or a group of people's opinions, that matters. And you you might have to sort of change your approach. Or indeed, indeed, it might mean you have to change your friends. That is certainly a possibility. So that's Gemini. I'm not actually saying that it's going to be a particularly dramatic day. You know, I think that you might be a little bit disappointed because you might feel that things aren't moving quite as fast as you'd like them to move and you might feel a little bit stuck and it, it might be tempting to use perhaps a huge amount of force to kind of change the situation, but I don't think that's really worth your effort. So I would have said, Gemini, overall, it might be best to just uh, bide your time. Cancer. You know, whenever uh, the moon is in Aries, I, I find myself having to say the same thing to you. And uh, I know we're talking about something that happens every month. But, you know, what I tend to say to you, Cancer, at this time, of, at this, at this time when the moon is in Aries, is, is, you know, I do talk about things like leadership and viewing yourself as a leader and not um, not really not shirking your responsibility to lead um, and it, it, you know it's because you know the moon is not just in Aries it's the moon is conjunct the north node and moon conjunct north node is where you should be going and being noticed, taking on a position of, of leadership at, at this at this time is can be important, but it's you know it is quite short term. We're talking about a couple of days while the moon is in Aries, so it's not the on, it's not the only thing going on, but you really shouldn't be underestimating yourself because you know you've got a lot to contribute. Plus, I don't see much in the way of opposition. You know, the moon is, yeah, it's in Aries, but it's not really making any aspects today. And you might think, oh, aspects are kind of um, exciting because they make things happen. But you could see aspects as, as being interference. So when the moon is not aspecting anything except North Node, it means that you have a free path. And in a many in many respects, you can make your own decisions. It's almost like today is an empty canvas. And while leadership and prominence are things that ideally you should be aspiring to, it can all be done in your way. Uh, so perhaps you might take the view that it's time to sort of start again. You know, people might have an impression of you. You don't have to be constrained by that impression. You can, you can really reinvent yourself. And you can perhaps reinvent the whole way you present yourself and the way in which you try to influence people. And you indeed can influence people just by saying what you think, saying what you believe. People will listen and okay they may not respond immediately but i think in the end they will so cancer i'm you know really suggesting that you really take advantage of today you know, a day when i think you have more freedom and and, and control for, 
than you have done for you know for, for some time you know the moon you know we've just had a full moon full moon on monday and then the moon was conjunct saturn recently but now the moon isn't really aspecting anything except the north node and the north node is just telling you that people need people need to know who you are and people i think need to know your opinions and you have a view about the way things should be done and i think that that needs to be respected now another thing going on today is that the sun is moving into virgo and sun moving into virgo for you is a pretty pleasant experience i would have said sun in leo uh, it was it wasn't quite you was it sun in leo it's you know leo was was the next following sign from cancer so leo and cancer don't have a great deal in common and you may have felt that you perhaps had to deal with things that you didn't really want to deal with perhaps of a material nature but now that uh, the sun is going into virgo i think there's there's greater clarity and at the same time you're able to communicate very well on your own terms and you can perhaps reconsider how you are communicating with the people around you and your your presence and your selfhood is going to be very clear and it will be just apparent that by and large you have most of the answers and it may in many cases just be a question of breaking the ice how do you how do you communicate with someone what do you need to do there may be a moment of hesitation because the sign in virgo does make a quincunx aspect to pluto in aquarius and so you may want to hold back because you may be thinking that this is a dangerous thing to do to open up a conversation to start talking to someone you never know what might happen but once you actually make the move once you start talking and you, in a sun in virgo you start i presumably in most cases you start talking about just simple details a detail that you understand the other person understands you might even want to point something out yeah great day for pointing something out did you know that this isn't right did you know that there's a crack in the road or whatever you want to talk about just some little detail is a good way to start a conversation and then you can move on move beyond that detail eventually so that's it cancer i think uh there is an obligation a certain obligation certainly to get noticed but i don't really see any obstacles and so no real obstacles and and, and i think that uh, you will have a fair amount of freedom today and i think that that should very much be welcomed leo it's true that the sun is moving out of your sign kind of depends where you are uh this morning if you're in america's sun has left sun leaves leo this afternoon in the uk western europe uh, it's out of leo it could be tomorrow morning if you're in australia or new zealand but the sun is leaving your sign and there may be a certain amount of sadness there it's always nice uh, to have the sun in leo because the sun is really strong in leo but it did provide a certain amount of pressure the sun in leo and i think that you may have felt that you just had to you know you but you had to take on too much you know the sun is obviously in leo always at the same time of year i don't know if you look back at what late july august is for you how it feels how you experience it but in many cases you are in the spotlight and now that the sun is moving into virgo the spotlight is to an extent off you and you can perhaps concentrate on other things uh, 
there may have been details that you haven't really considered, you haven't thought were important, and now you can start start addressing them again. Uh, so if you're, I don't know, if you, perhaps if you're in a northern hemisphere, uh, it's a time when uh, summer is coming to an end. Leos can start perhaps preparing for the winter in the northern hemisphere. Uh, obviously slightly different in the southern hemisphere. So preparation might be important. Um, or oh, if you're in the Americas, of course. Uh, sorry, if you're in the United States, you can get these. You get. You can get this extension. You know, you've got August. Of, it's what, when is it? April the fifteenth is a deadline for, for handing in your tax. But in fact, you don't actually. You can actually postpone it until October the fifteenth. And so now, with the sun in Virgo, some Amer- if you're if you're an American Leo who hasn't. Uh, who hasn't done your tax yet, or you've you've got a postponement, then with Sun and Virgo, now might be the chance to start to think about it, uh, because you'll be able to focus on the details now. So that might be uh, one way of looking at it. At least I understand you can get this postponement until October the 15th. I'm not a financial advisor. At least that's my layman's understanding. You better check the details for yourself. Uh, But... uh, that could be something something Virgos want to want to consider. Even if you're not in America, in, in the US, and it's not about tax. I think that with Sun in Virgo, it's just a great time to be just addressing yourself to just boring administrative and financial details. Uh, you just don't want to do it. It seems a bit beneath you. But now the Sun is in Virgo. It's it seems to be pretty easy not so difficult yeah sure it's boring but i think that you can deal with it now that's not the only thing going on uh the moon is in aries that does give a different picture and maybe because the moon is in aries you won't actually notice the sun moving into virgo the moon in aries is you know moon in aries is a very expansive sign. Moon and Aries doesn't care about details at all, does it? It wants to go beyond things. And that is the right thing to do. So when looking at what is what is happening around you, don't yeah, don't get too caught up on details today. Maybe next week or tomorrow or the day after the details are going to start to matter but if we're actually talking about today you do have to go beyond those details and you somehow need to be able to stretch yourself i think that is a challenge to stretch yourself on on an inspirational level and also on an informational level you have to go beyond the things you know and just start to consider the unknown. Not unknown in a sort of scary, spooky kind of way, but the unknown in just in the sense of paths you haven't travelled, paths you haven't considered, and now might be the time to really think about that. And you might, while you're at it, you might be thinking about things that are exotic and maybe have a foreign overseas nature and Leos may feel that in order to really be yourself you have to travel and travel of course takes many forms it doesn't necessarily mean you have to get on a plane but uh, travel is going to be at some level important to you and so travel is about putting yourself in a different place somewhere that is far removed from where you are now and that may not be about planes it may be about what you focus on what you're thinking about um, your general sense of um, who you are and what you are imagining and 
that is the right direction for you to go. So, so if possible, Leo, you should try to look up rather than to look look down. And and also, Leo, even though the sun is moving out of your sign, I actually think that you you have a, a considerable amount of power at your disposal, and this power may be connected with the fact that the sun is quincunx uh quincunx pluto so the sun is uh the sun quincunx pluto does raise issues of power and how much power you've got and you're perhaps thinking have you got enough power how much power do other people have and that might bother you to an extent but if you feel that you need to make a display, show yourself and show the rest of the world how much power you really have, I think that you might be pleasantly surprised. So it's not normally considered to be a good thing to do, to deliberately try to assert yourself and to be obsessed about power and all this kind of thing. But today... In a way, it might be the right thing to do. Maybe you need to prove to yourself that you are in control. That doesn't mean you have to cause disruption. It doesn't mean you have to upset anyone. You may just have to sort of choose an area where you're going to demonstrate to yourself that you can make things happen in your own way. And you're indeed going to be able to create some kind of mini transformation. I I really do think that that is possible. And... I think that that could be, you know, very good for your ego. And perhaps your your ego needs a boost just as just as the sun is leaving Leo, mo- moving into Virgo. You give yourself a little bit of a boost. You give yourself evidence that you really are in the right place, that you're on the right track and that you are in control. Virgo. So... The Virgo season has started. Uh, the sun is moving into Virgo. That kind of depends on where you are. But this morning in the Americas, the moon moves into Virgo. Late this afternoon in Europe, it moves into Virgo. And I suppose in Africa as well. And tomorrow... Uh... So let me get that right. Yeah, that's right. Late afternoon in Late afternoon in Europe, the sun moves into Virgo in Asia in this, even, uh, this evening, maybe early tomorrow morning in Australia, New Zealand, East Asia. But still, we can regard it as a, a Virgo day and the beginning of the Virgo season, at least in terms of the sun. And so with the sun moving into Virgo... Um, I think that you're feeling perhaps a sense of real change, that something has really shifted. You might not see any immediate evidence of this today, but fundamentally deep down you know something has changed and it's changing, I think, for the better. You know, There have been a lot of things, Virgo, which I think that you've been holding back on. You might have been postponing them. (laughs) Remember that Mercury is, you know, Mercury, your ruler, has been retrograde. So, yeah, you've been postponing things. Or you found that things just haven't worked out as you'd expect them to. And now with the sun moving into Virgo, things are changing. And you you can feel that you... You understand the world around you. The details make sense. The details are starting to make sense. And you really do understand your place in it all. And when the sun moves into Virgo, the sun makes a quincunx with Pluto. And this uh, quincunx with Pluto, I mean, it's not just about today. I think it'll be around tomorrow as well. But this quincunx with Pluto could make you hypersensitive. I mean, let 
no, I mean, let, let me be careful with that word hypersensitive because um, I don't want to cause any alarm. So let's start with the hypersensitivity in terms of just the material world. Um, I think that you will really see things. And I, I think you'll be able to see things in microscopic detail with Sun, Quincunx, Pluto. And um, that's going to be useful. And it could be useful provided you don't exaggerate. And you are going to be able to see the beginnings of things. You can see... I suppose you see these tiny details and you see the beginnings of the future. You can see the future in the present. You can see the future in the past. It's there. And, you know, I, off the top of my head, I think H.G. Wells was a Virgo. Is that right? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think H.G. Wells was a Virgo. And he, you know, he talked about the you know, the archaeology of the future, how you can actually look at what's happening in your what the world around you. And and indeed what's happened in the recent past. And, and that, what you see in the world, those details you see, they tell you about the future. And, and I think that's perhaps what this sun, quincunx, Pluto may be about for you. Remember, Pluto, OK, Pluto is, is going out of Aquarius and into Capricorn, but it will come back into Aquarius. But you see it and it's starting to line up and you might then want to consider how you're going to position yourself. Now, that's one approach to hypersensitivity. In terms of health, I mean, I understand Virgo is quite a health orientated sign uh, traditionally and health matters and so with sun quincunx pluto there may be a certain sense of sensitivity to things things you consume things in your environment you you notice immediately if something is tainted if something is contaminated if there are toxins pollutants whatever you can feel it straight away and you get it and that's good in one sense because you are able to, I think, remove yourself in many cases before there are any negative impacts. On the other hand, if you hang around in a place that is full of pollutants or you're eating garbage, then I think your body is going to pick up on it quite quickly with that sun, with that sun, quincunx Pluto. But just remember, I'm not giving any health advice here. I'm, I'm not making any predictions about your health it's it's just a sense about of looking at looking at the horoscope perhaps from a slightly negative point of view at, at, in, at times perhaps looking at maybe the worst things that can happen so you know if you buy food and you you're told that there are things in this food and that there are things not in this food you know don't necessarily believe what you're told and you could just could be sensitive to very very small amounts of um, whatever whatever you might be allergic to. So that's or whatever you might react badly to. Um, and this this sun quincunx Pluto, you know, it's a fairly short lived aspect. It's it's around today. It's probably around tomorrow. But after that, it, it will move on. But I I thought I just had to had to mention it. Libra. So, Libra, we have the moon in Aries, which is your opposite sign. And the moon is making a conjunction to the north node. And so with the moon making a conjunction to the north node in Aries, I think it's going to be important today to consider other people. But to consider them in the right way. So it is true with the moon in Aries that other people are important, that they can't really be ignored. 
At the same time, the North Node is in Aries. Aries is a sign that is about assertion. And it's about someone perhaps being in control, someone calling the shots. And I think with this Moon conjunct the North Node, you will be to an extent aware of a certain power balance and kind of what you have to do what is if you like the right thing to do is to accept other people accept other people's potential for having an influence on you but for not taking things too far to making sure that you are in control all the time but at the same time you have got a space there to be influenced so you can be influenced a bit to an extent if it is appropriate but it's really about saying well your freedom is about your freedom to consider other views to consider other people that is a freedom uh, your freedom to make yourself known perhaps in a social sense and you can therefore perhaps make choices you don't you don't have to be tied to any one social scene because moon in north moon the moon conjunct the north node in aries is perhaps about taking initiatives in terms of who you are with so if you don't want to be with one person you might want to be with another person and you know that's perhaps how you need to to consider some of the challenges of today just not not feeling that today is all about one person it may be about several people and you're not tied to anyone absolutely not and you have to make your choices but also at the same time just being aware of the fact that you're always going to be influenced at some level by what is going on around you you, you can't isolate yourself but you know as i think as a libran i think that is something that you are very aware of and one of the main one of the big things happening today is the sun moving into virgo and of course the sun stays in virgo until the autumnal equinox autumnal in the northern hemisphere and so it stays in virgo until the equinox and this is often a time of year when librans feel that they need to sort of pause for reflection uh yeah sure you understand that people matter you you understand that no libran is an island but at the same time a bit of reflection can be important over the next few weeks and you know you shouldn't for example make up your mind about much and you probably shouldn't overcommit yourself so when you're looking at what you're doing between now and the end of september commitment is not really something that you should be looking for i mean okay i understand some com- some commitments really do have to be made but uh right now if you're being pressured to make a commitment you should probably say no because the more opportunities you have the more freedom you have the better but again always take into account the fact that the influence of other people cannot be ignored especially today when the moon is in when the moon is in aries and the social dimension of things is further emphasized by the fact that we have a square aspect between venus and mars now this square aspect between venus and mars is exact this evening if you're in the americas but it's exact tomorrow uh if you're not uh so venus square this venus square mars i think is quite important i'll be talking about it again tomorrow but you know venus represents perhaps you mars represents 
another person. And so at some level, you are trying to make sense of things. That's perhaps what you really want. You want to make sense of things. You want to know where you are. And you just might find with Venus square Mars that some people just make it difficult for you. You know, you think you've understood things and then they raise questions, raise points, talk about stuff that you don't want to hear. And that just could represent a certain amount of annoyance and aggravation. And more so in terms of perhaps close relationships, I think that you might find that partners are maybe more talkative than usual, or maybe they're talk just as talkative as they were not so long ago, but it, you're noticing it more. You're noticing what people, what people say. You're noticing the way their ideas form. You're noticing perhaps their, I won't say mental instability because that's not what I mean. It's more that one idea can shift into another idea very quickly and it can de be destabilizing. And you're noticing all of that. And there's you trying to sort everything out, trying to make sure that everything's in order and you're just not being helped. And it could be that you're being encouraged to think again, that you're being encouraged to reconsider yourself. And maybe, but maybe another person is providing an important role there. Alternatively, it could just be that someone is just being difficult, is talking too much and they're just not making life easy for anyone. So that is certainly a possibility that you probably need to give weight to. Uh, so don't, uh, don't allow anyone to totally distract you because, you know, there are things that you would like to do. On the plus side, you know, Venus square Mars is quite an attractive aspect. And I think today and tomorrow, Libra, I do think that you're going to be more attractive than, than usual. You're going to get people's attention. Uh, certain types of people. You know, it's, it is the kind of attraction that is very focused and very targeted. So some people might not find it attract something attractive or desirable. Other people might find something incredibly desirable. So it kind of depends. But uh, do consider what impact you're having on people. I think you are having an impact on people. Some people do find you appealing and attractive. Some people actually find, find you the opposite. Because that is the nature of a Venus Mars square. And perhaps you need to, you know, make an effort to sort of understand how other people are responding to you without getting too self-conscious. So this Venus Mars square, it's important today and yeah, it's important tomorrow and tomorrow it will also be exact and I will be going over the Venus Mars square again tomorrow. Scorpio. Just been talking to Libra. I have just been mentioning to Libra that there is a square between Venus and Mars and Venus and the Venus Mars square does have an impact on you because because Mars is your ruler. Mars rules Scorpio. And so when Venus is squaring Mars, uh, it it does mean that there are certain people that can't be avoided. You know, they might be friends, they, they might be partners, just people you just have to deal with in your daily life. And I think that you have to perhaps accept that there may be some difference of approach. I won't say difference of opinion, but certainly a difference of approach. I think that you might find that some people are talking about stuff and focusing on things that, frankly, you don't find to be very interesting. And it may feel that people are just being just too mundane, too, 
too on the surface. So talking about, I don't know, minor financial details, perhaps what something looks like, um, you know, whether one shade of color is better than another shade of color, you know, that kind of thing. And, you know, here's you, you know, on this, you know, taking the view, you know, we live in, you know, you live, we all live in a serious world and here's people talking, talking nonsense, maybe it may even sound like nonsense. And, you know, how do you deal with it? I think that it might be a good idea to humor people, uh, perhaps giving the impression that you're interested. That might be one approach. Uh, just telling someone that you're not interested in it, uh, that you find the whole matter boring. It might be what you'd like to say, but, you know, why, why, co why cause more problems than is necessary? You should also consider the possibility, Scorpio, that if someone is boring you, is really boring you, you they're boring you to the stage where you can't really listen to what they're saying, uh, that maybe they're saying something important somewhere. You know, I know certain things are just beneath beneath you, but maybe right now there's something that you should be considering and you're being told about it. And perhaps you just have to sort of just listen. I mean, not all day, but just try to understand what someone is trying to say and try to work out whether or not what they're saying is useful to you. Because it could be. It could be useful. And you don't want to deny yourself that possibility and at the same time you know you are trying very hard to make things easy for yourself I think that's that's another thing going on today you want things to be easy and straightforward and you you understand also that things are complicated and you are perhaps really sort of going into yourself to try to understand certain complications. And it, it's difficult. It's difficult to make progress. It really is at times. because, But you have to start somewhere. And it may be that what you should be doing today is you're starting to build something and you don't entirely know what you're building or why you're building it and building something is the process of making something clear uh, it's uh, like you start with uh, I don't know it's like Lego isn't it of course nowadays Lego is just they like you buy when you buy Lego you buy Lego in terms of you buy it's all themed on a particular item like a space station or I don't know an ambulance or something or, or a fire engine but I seem to remember Lego as just being as a child just being just a suitcase full of random piled up to the top with random bricks and there's no concept of a fire engine that you're supposed to build according to the instructions and maybe the older view of Lego um, before people needed to be told what to build uh, is perhaps uh, the way it sh the way it should be, and you have to perhaps start. It's like you're making something out of Lego, and you don't actually know what you're building. This is not a situation where you know what you're building, but you do know that this is the only way to to create structure. You have to start building something, because otherwise, you know, you've just you've just got chaos. Uh, you have perhaps got a suitcase full of Lego bricks. You're not going to be relying on someone's instructions because that is beneath you. And it's got to be something that is individual. And so you just have to sort of build it in your own way. At first, it doesn't make sense, but you put one brick together and you put another brick together and slowly something something starts to form. And before you know it, you are you really are making sense of the situation. I suppose I should say one word about sun going into Virgo. Um, sun going into Virgo, I th think from your perspective, is quite useful. I mean, I'm not really talking so much about 
today, but over the next few weeks, I think the sun, sun in Virgo does give you an opportunity to streamline your social life. Perhaps there are some people you don't need in your life anymore, but there are some people you need to bring in. And at the same time, because the sun is making a quincunx to Pluto, you do have a lot of reservations in terms of other people, social contacts, and you somehow have to sort of break through those reservations, but at the same time accept them and understand them. And so perhaps the challenge with Sun in Virgo is, Sun moving through Virgo, is to find people who you can really relate to, who, who, who understand you and you understand them. And you need to perhaps be, you know, you need to be quite focused on what kind of people they are, focusing on the details of their behavior and their background and who they are emotionally. But I think that there can be a favorable shift over the next few weeks in terms of your social life and how you're your friends, colleagues and associates are all configured and uh, which people you want to trust. Sagittarius. Sagittarius, it's a time when you feel that you need to start making an impact. You know, you can be impactful and you kind of get a sense for what you actually need to do and how you need to um, bring your many and various talents together. And also, it, it really does matter at the moment, and it's going to matter over the next month as the sun starts moving through Virgo, that uh, you, Sagittarius, are taken seriously and you expect to be taken seriously and you're going to be quite diligent you know i understand sagittarius sometimes has a reputation for being a bit uh what's the word uh, i won't say sloppy but they just want to want to make things happen and they don't care about the little details and the key thing is is the big impression and over the next few weeks, as the sun moves into Virgo, I think that you can kind of get the best of both worlds. You can present a vision, but at the same time, Sagittarius, you can get that vision right. You can actually make it work. And in order to make it work, I suppose it's got to be properly wired, hasn't it? I mean, the wiring does matter. And so with the sun in Virgo, the wires are going to be all sorted out and you're not going to be no you're going to know what plugs into where and i think that is going to mean that you can really have quite a powerful impact but as far as today is concerned perhaps tomorrow the sun sure it does move into virgo but the sun is making a quincunx to pluto 150 degree aspect and Perhaps the big challenge here is how you get your message across, how you communicate. Because I think you will do feel that there is something that does have to be communicated. Uh, um, you, have to, you have to explain to people what you're doing. But you may, you may feel that you can't. Perhaps you'll feel that there are things you want to keep secret. Perhaps you're going to be nervous about telling people what you really think and feel. But whatever it is, there's got to be a solution. There is a solution. Quincunxes are about taking a strange object and finding the right place for it. There is a right place for you, Sagittarius, to communicate and to explain your vision. And it, it may be the physical location, where you are doing the explaining. It also may be about who you are explaining to. And 
it's important, Sagittarius, that you're not too self-conscious. You know, I, I know that Sagittarius is not normally a particularly self-conscious sign, but right at the moment, right now, there may be a little bit of self-consciousness. You may be just a little bit nervous about how you're coming across and how people are going to respond to you. And it's a concern that is real, but as far as I can see from, from the astrology, there is absolutely a way of doing it. And perhaps you need to think, you know, you need to think about what you're saying, who you're saying it to, where you're saying it. But in the end, I do think that you can really make that, make that, get that message across very clearly and powerfully as well. And, you know, while all this is going on today, there's a big focus on you as someone who is really very very talented and you've got these unique skills which are really starting to become clear because you know you've got the moon conjunct north node in in aries aries far sign has a natural sympathy with sagittarius your sign and so there's just this natural sense of what you've got to contribute and that feeling about what you've got to contribute of course cannot be compromised and it's all part of the way you express yourself the way you communicate you are expressing yourself powerfully but you're also expressing everything who you are and everything you've got to offer and i think once you get it right once you put put everything in the right place once you've found the moment to really push forward with who you are and what you've got to offer i think people will be really very impressed capricorn it may be a time capricorn when you feel that it might be best to look at things perhaps uh, from afar you don't you don't have to be right in the middle of things and you have your own obligations and things you know that, that you, things you just know are important and these things that are important are perhaps not anything that many people appreciate you know they don't understand the full capricorn world and there's, there's, there's no point in explaining to them. So decide what matters. Decide how you're going to do it. And make sure that you've got the time in, in, in which to do it. And I think it's going to be very important to prioritise yourself. And yeah, it is you that matters. And I don't think you're going to have any difficulty... Uh, making it clear that you are someone who is powerful you've got your own opinions you've got your own boundaries and you're someone that uh, if you want something to happen you can make it happen and overall i think today people are going to respect you so because people respect you that means you can choose today what you do and what you don't do don't want to do something don't do it if you want to do something you want to spend a lot of time on it then go ahead do it and for many capricorns there might be quite a big focus on your home and on your family uh, there are things you need to do about home and houses i don't know what your relationship to houses and property is but that may be where a lot of your energy needs to go and yeah don't don't forget your family uh, your family are important. I mean, I know I've just said that you need to prioritise yourself, but I suppose what I was kind of saying is you need to prioritise yourself and the things that are absolutely crucial to you, and that would, of course, include your your close family. But I don't want to give an impression of a sort of a claustrophobic day when you're just, just focusing on... Um, on yourself and your immediate interest interests and houses and homes and whatever there is something else going on and that is the fact that uh, the sun is moving into virgo and so over the course of the day 
sun moves into Virgo and uh, Virgo is a sign that just has a natural affinity with Capricorn because they're both um, they're both earth signs and I think that with the sun moving into Virgo moving out of Leo into Virgo I think you're going to just feel that things are just a little less complicated uh, a little easier to understand and as things are perhaps less complicated you may you may just feel that some of the some of the fog is starting to clear and today and tomorrow you might you, yeah you might just start to see things just much more clearly than you had in the past and you'll start to perhaps understand the the truth of the matter and you'll see that the truth is not just about you and your home and your family and your immediate interests. The truth does go beyond that. And I, I think, you know, as the sun moves into Virgo, you're, you're going to want to do something to get hold of knowledge and truth. I've, I've talked about this before when discussing Cap the Capricorn, your sign. You know, it's just so important to be informed particularly about to be informed about things you really know nothing about. But there'll be something that you feel you need to know something about, you want to know something about it, you know it's important, you're not quite sure why, but you just will feel that you need to make some inquiries. And I think once you make those inquiries, uh, you'll, you'll start to realise uh, something new and you'll see an opportunity for yourself and not just an opportunity for yourself, but the way forward. It'll all become clear to you. And so clarity is going to be perhaps a feature of the next few weeks as, as you see, as you start to understand the, the underlying truth. Aquarius. Aquarius, you have quite a lot on your mind. And you don't really want to keep it to yourself. I mean, it's you've got these insights which you certainly regard as important, and you you want to share them. And you will be very interested in um, getting feedback. And yeah, getting feedback does matter. And so, the more people you can explain things to, the better. So you have ideas, uh, you have thoughts, and those those ideas and thoughts, if you keep them to yourself, what are they going to do? They're probably just going to fester. But once you start to start to discuss them and get down to the details, the details do matter. And so if you have an impression, a broad impression, uh, that's great to have a broad impression, but broad impressions don't count for much. The broad impression has to be supported by the facts. And you shouldn't be afraid of looking for the facts because the facts will, of course, tell you whether you're right or wrong. And you can't be right about everything. And you just may get a, you may get some hints that you may have misunderstood something. But that's not a problem. It doesn't impact the broad picture. It, it allows you to... Uh, make a few changes at a sort of root level and you know then you can just uh, just move on and I think that that uh, that's that's the way that is the way forward you have this kind of balance uh, your broad ambitions but with the actual nitty gritty and that, that's that's something you need to make sure you understand and just asking questions would be a good way to um, start to deal with things and another thing going on today is we've got the sun moving into Virgo now Virgo and Aquarius are two signs that really don't have much to do with each other in some ways, I mean, I, I think it would be, it, 
it would be wrong to say that Virgo and Aquarius have nothing, have no connection. I, I mean, both Virgo and Aquarius are capable of a certain amount of detachment, but the detachment is working in a completely different way. You know, I suppose Aquarius likes to think about the wider picture. Uh, this is what it's all about, the big picture. And it's all about doing something that is um, perhaps related to society uh, and not getting too focused on the individual. Because Aquarius, in a way, is the anti-Leo. Aquarius is opposite Leo. And so Leo just gets completely focused on itself, potentially, while as Aquarius is able to consider whatever's going on beyond the self. And so that can create a certain amount of detachment. And because it, also with Aquarius, it's not, it's not a water sign. They don't, you don't have those, that kind of emotional attachments that you know, other you know, water signs like Cancer have. But Virgo's detachment is different. Virgo's detachment is about seeing things as they are not being attached to the broad picture because Virgo can untangle it all. Virgo can see all the details. So Virgo isn't fooled by something big and spectacular. Virgo can detach by looking at, its, looking at the component parts. So why am I talking about this? Well, the reason I'm talking about this is because the sun moves into Virgo today, yes, and the sun makes a quincunx aspect to Pluto. So you've got Pluto is in Aquarius and sun is in Virgo. So Pluto in Aquarius, that is about you. Did I say sun in Aquarius? Pluto in Aquarius. Pluto in Aquarius is about you being someone who can create change you're just you've been aware of this for the last couple of years on and off that you are in a position where you can create quite dramatic change and at the moment you may be considering how this change can be brought to bear and what you can do and the sun in virgo is challenging you it's saying it's all very well having these big ideas having these ideas about how you transform your circumstance and whatever. But, you know, you've got to focus on the details here. And there are certain details that you haven't considered. And, you know, if in doubt, do nothing. Change is dangerous. And change is certainly dangerous if you haven't considered everything. Uh, that's, that's certainly true. So this goes back to the moon in Aries conjunct the North Node. You need to consider everything. And it's not just that the broad concepts that matter. It is the the various details and the facts that underlie them. So that's what you're managing um, today. So that's, 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 that's the main thing, I think, at the moment. Uh, one other thing. Sun is... Uh, ruler of Leo, which is your opposite sign. So Sun moving from Leo to Virgo, you may notice a change in some of the people you're close to. Um, they, on the surface, might seem perhaps a little less interesting, uh, or they may seem uh, just more, they, they may start to be concerned about things that they just weren't concerned about before. And what you might be witnessing is that some people may be, may be developing a growing sense of reality and just seeing things for what they are. And I think that should probably be, be welcomed and perhaps you should try to understand this change of emphasis that, that some people are, are experiencing. Pisces. Pisces. Sun moving into Virgo, obviously. Uh, what does that mean for a Pisces? Well, the sun is moving into your opposite sign. And so with sun moving into your opposite sign, 
it may be the case that you do have to spend a little more time than usual on dealing with certain people. I mean, Venus is already in Virgo. You've now got uh, the Sun moving into Virgo. And so, you know, do look at the influence that certain people have on you. And also try to consider what they're trying to tell you. Because Virgo represents the, the the sort of hidden side of Pisces. I mean, the, if you look at the the contrast between Pisces and Virgo, you know, Pisces is supposed to be about the sea. It's supposed to be about flow and um, always being in motion, uh, at least in a, in a sort of an emotional sense. And Virgo is... Yeah, it is a mutable sign, like Virgo, like Pisces. There is this flow, but it is a flow about looking at the raw components, how things are made, uh, how how things are structured. And that's something that intrinsically Pisces doesn't really want to have to bother with. And you're perhaps being challenged in this way as the sun moves into Virgo. It may not even be that you're challenged by a person. It may be that you're challenged by just the way things are going, that uh, it's not enough just to, to be able to float, you know, float and flow free. You have to consider the, the real underlying details of the matter. That might actually mean, mean, meaning have to, having to stop and consider. But in terms of other people, it just may be that some of the people you're, you will be coming across soon are more focused on details than usual. And they may be bringing up details that perhaps you, you don't really want to bother with, that you just regard as being somewhat unimportant. But it does matter. And... You know, it all. It also matters the fact that you know today we've got the moon in Aries, moon conjunct, moon conjunct the North Node in Aries, and Aries is a sign following Pisces, and it's a sign that can be connected with money and possessions and what you have, and it is perhaps a good time for Pisces to do an inventory whatever that inventory means, just an inventory of what you have and what, also to consider what you don't have. And it's important not, not to make things difficult, just to be very realistic about it. Be realistic about what you have. Uh, don't, don't play games or don't play accounting tricks. Just be honest about what you have and what you don't have. And... Be honest, perhaps, about perhaps what needs to be done. Um, so if you feel that something is owed to you, something belongs to you, and it's been taken from you, or someone else has possession of it, then with Moon in, moon in Aries conjunct the North Node, it is possibly the right time to take action, asking for it back. That may not be a confrontation with another person. It may be a confrontation with an organization or a bank or whatever. So if you want to take on someone who, or someone or somebody who owes you money, then now might actually be quite a good time to do it. Uh, not least because you'll just have the energy. You'll have the energy and the enthusiasm once you get going. Uh, and I'm not just talking about today. I'm talking about tomorrow because the moon is in Aries today. Yeah, but it's... Tomorrow you've got a moon trine Mercury, which I think is going to really help with that. I'll be talking about the moon trine Mercury when I talk about what's going on, yeah, on Friday tomorrow. But uh, now that's it, Pisces. That's all I'm going to uh, all I'm going to say. And that's it with my forecasts for the twelve signs. And now I want to consider today, Thursday, August the twenty second, from the perspective of the I Ching. So I ask the question. What is Thursday going to be like for those watching the I Ching section of this video? And the first hexagram I got was 
hexagram number 18, illness. Now, when I did the I Ching yesterday, illness was the second hexagram. So illness has come up again. Um, and the Wilhelm translation of the I Ching describes this as being as working on what has been spoilt. So it seems that there is continued emphasis on trying to sort out a problem, working on what has been spoilt. You know, illness, I think by and large, I'm looking at it sort of metaphorically, um, not being physically ill, but just something wrong that needs to be fixed and Perhaps that's the that's the way the that's the way the day starts, and uh, we have got two moving lines, and the bottom line talks about putting right the mistakes of the father, and what this means is, as I understand I Ching, it's talking about a tradition, something we've been very used to doing for a long time, hence the mistakes of the father, the, the, the mistakes of the previous generation, perhaps. Again, this is sort of metaphorical, perhaps. So it's, all, it's very nice to have a tradition, to do things in the same way, but sometimes the tradition can get tired it's no longer uh, fulfilling any useful function. And the Wilhelm translation of the I Ching, of course, associates working on what has been spoilt with decay. And so it's a can of worms, basically. And so what used to be really nice and honourable, and we, 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 we continue with things from the past. It's not working anymore. It's not just not working anymore. It's it's causing a mess, and it's it's leading to decay. It's leading to stagnation, and we need to do something about it. And in fact, uh, there is a suggestion that. Actually, you need to, you need to pray, because the metaphor that the I Ching does use is that the sun has to be. At, remember, the I Ching is really into hierarchies and families, Confucian way of doing it. The sun has to be around, because the sun has to make sure that the prayers and sacrifices are all said. So it's not just it's not just saying if you've got an illness, it's not the immediate medicine that's required it's also the prayers and the sacrifice and so if there is a problem if, if the tradition needs to be brought to an end or we need to certainly transformed then okay we've got an immediate cause of the problem but in order to speed things on we perhaps need to i don't say praying or sacrificing certainly not sacrificing <laughs> Uh, but it's instead is about um, perhaps doing other things in our life and making ourselves um, sort of more disciplined and streamlined, which don't have a direct impact on the problem at hand. But somehow, if we're in good shape, if we're clearing ourselves up, then we can start clearing the problem up. And so, you know, that might be what we mean. I must emphasize sacrifice. I'm not you absolutely I mustn't kill anything. Um, a sacrifice means, I don't know, giving something up you enjoy temporarily, maybe. <laughs> but prayers and sacrifice, again, it's just a symbol. Um, and we're not having to deal with anything that's, I think it's necessarily our fault. It's just that the past has has just got to be too much of a good thing and just because people did have done it for years and years doesn't mean it's it doesn't mean it's good in fact it's probably no longer working and then the second line moves and this actually talks about the mistakes of the mother and this is another level of mistakes and 
Remember, this is I Ching, the Confucian view, and the mother is seen as being sort of more about yin, more about sort of weakness. And again, this is what the I Ching is says. Just, just bear that in mind. This is not, uh, I'm not making any comment about mothers here. And perhaps in the past we've been too weak, too complacent, we've allowed things to get out of control and now look, now look what's happening and that's what the problem is. And it may not even just be our problem, it may be someone else's problem and there is an alternative interpretation of the second line from the top which says that actually we should not be involved, that it's other people's problem so let them deal with it. They've been weak in the past. They've allowed things to get out of control. And maybe we need to actually have the discipline to step back and say, well, you created this problem. You created this problem through your own weakness. And now you've got to sort it out. So that may be a way of dealing with it. But whatever it is with illness, it's about rooting out the decay. And there's always this implication of illness that it is something that can be cured something that can be healed and made right again. Now this hexagram illness, it does move and it moves to hexagram 22, which is grace. And grace is not asking us to do anything really. It's all about how we appear. It's not a time to be moving on, taking big initiatives or anything. So it's all about we resolve the issue in the previous hexagram, 18, and then we move, having resolved it, everything is calm. We can, we can, we can maintain appearances and it's the appearances perhaps that matter here with grace. Just feeling comfortable, feeling that we've got over this particular hurdle. We've made things one and we perhaps just need to just consider the situation, enjoy enjoy the current situation, but don't move on. Perhaps we just have to have to take on board the fact that there has been a change. We had to root something out, and now we can just just relax a bit, and perhaps that's that's the best best approach. Okay, uh, it, the sun's going into Virgo today, perhaps tomorrow if you're in. Australia or New Zealand, certainly tomorrow. Um, and now I want to just want to look at Virgo, Sun in Virgo. Uh, it's very abstract looking at the Sun in Virgo, isn't it? Uh, you know, Gogolin, Michel Gogolin, he did his system where he used statistics to try to work out which planets worked. And he didn't find any any evidence that Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto worked. But the two pl he found evidence that the Moon worked, that Mars, Venus, Jupiter, Saturn, that where they were relative to the horizon, and and the mid heaven, could have an impact on personality. But Gauguin found that the Sun and Mercury did not work. Um, so that's a bit of a shame, isn't it? Uh, and we're talking about a, a sun sign here. We want to know what does it mean to have sun in Virgo. But you know, if you take Gauguin's work, then perhaps you'd say, well, it actually means nothing. Uh, I would disagree with that. I think the sun signs are important. And the sun in Virgo, it, as I've said at the beginning, sun in Virgo sometimes has... A bad reputation and I think that I think what people don't like about Virgo and I, and I have to be really careful here if you are a Virgo just don't get offended um, um, I, I'm, I just I'm just trying to give an idea about what what people think about Virgo and why people might might be a, might have an issue with Virgo and what people do say with Virgo is that you know standard stereotype Virgo obsessed about detail into really breaking things down, seeing, looking at the component parts. And that's 
something that doesn't sound uh, very nice, does it? We want people who are, you know, the, the free thinking Sagittarians or the dynamic Aries or the um, deep, intense Scorpios. But Virgo does get a bit of a bad deal, bad deal here. And I, but perhaps it's a, some comfort then to know that, according to Gogolin, the sun doesn't actually mean anything according to, to his research. But with the sun in Virgo, it, you, you often get the feeling that you have to look at what else is going on in the chart, perhaps more than with other signs. And sun in Virgo is, remember, as I said, the sun in Virgo is a male planet. So in, it's going to be more descriptive, I think, of men, you know, after the age, after they've become adults, than of women. I think women, as they grow older, they sort of to an, do to an extent grow into their moons. And I suppose the key thing about Virgos is that Virgos can actually start to see the reality of things. I mean, it, it's perhaps because they do have a good sense of detail. Uh, they can put themselves in a situation where they are not fooled. Uh, other people want to pretend, but Virgos just see this is this is the way it is, and this simply cannot be helped, and that can perhaps feed into this idea that some Virgos can be quite totalitarian in their approach, as will be coming as I'll be demonstrating perhaps when I look at some Virgos charts. But there is another view to Virgo. Virgo can Virgo is an earth sign. So people with the sun in Virgo are grounded. They understand the earth. They understand the value of the earth. The symbol for Virgo, I believe, is, represents a grain of corn. So Virgo has an association with growing things, with agriculture, and with the absolutely essential things in life. And Virgo is often associated with service. Um, now, one doesn't necessarily want to take things too far on that. Um, you know, we don't want to... You know, Mother Teresa, I'll, I'll talk about Mother Teresa, but Mother Teresa perhaps represents some aspects of the Virgo. She was a Virgo. And so some people sort of like idolise Mother Teresa as being the idea of service. She dedicates herself to the poor in Calcutta. Of course, there is another view of Mother Teresa. If you've read, uh, is it Christopher Hitchens book? Uh, I think it was called the, Mission, the Missionary Position. Was that what his book was? And he also, there's a YouTube video uh, he wrote about um, Mother Teresa, which I think he called it Hell's Angel. So you can see the, you know, you could take an alternative view of Mother Teresa, that Mother Teresa as a is trying her hardest to achieve her aims, which I suppose is getting to heaven. And so you could say that Mother Teresa as a Virgo was sort of getting to heaven on the backs of the, on the backs of the poor of Calcutta. And actually the, the clinic is a complete disaster using dirty needles and the poor are just instruments for Virgo's purpose. See, Virgo is quite purpose-driven. So for Mother Teresa... Underneath it all, if you actually apply a Virgo approach to Mother Teresa the Virgo, you could see what she's really doing is that she is um, she's just using the poor. She's using the poor to get to heaven, and perhaps she's using the poor for self and self grand in self grandizement if that's the right the word i mean i know that's not you what you'd associate with um mother teresa but uh she perhaps represents some of the issues with virgo and you know virgos are sometimes accused of hypocrisy uh they say one thing but they're actually doing something else and so again uh mother teresa might might represent that i don't know i'm sorry if i've i'm you know, Mother Teresa is really important to you, but I think she is a very controversial figure who does happen to be a Virgo. So let's let's actually look at some 
let's look at some Virgos. And uh, so let's uh, let's start with let's start with um, the Emperor Caligula. <laughs> so Emperor Caligula, uh, war, he became emperor when he was twenty five, and I think he reigned for about four years, and he was murdered by the Praetorian Guard at the time of his Saturn return. And Caligula is seen as a sort of archetypal monster. And uh, I suppose with... I don't know, where is where is his son? He, there's his son at five Virgo. Um, I mean, I don't think there's anything in his chart which immediately strikes me as being particularly monstrous. So let's just look at the sun sign. Sun, I mean, the sun in Virgo, perhaps he, perhaps he, it's there's Virgo taking things too literally. I mean, Virgo can look at the details and I suppose if you're the emperor and you are almost... I don't quite know how it worked. You were one step towards becoming a living God and you have this sense of power and uh, maybe maybe it just gets completely out of control. And Virgo is about the body and Virgo can be overly obsessed about the body. And of course, I mean, one of the associations with Caligula is sexual debauchery of course this was exact this was perhaps exaggerated by suetonius in the 12 caesars um who wrote the um, um, sort of ancient gossip columnist columnist uh, suetonius um writing about the 12 caesars the 12 caesars and their excesses um, and also of course you had that film with malcolm mcdowell in the late 70s um called caligula but it does seem which was apparently pretty much a porn film but um uh sexual excess could be virgo out of control because virgo is a uh it's an earth sign but it can could be just earth going yeah earth going over the top and virgo just not being able to sort of um make sense of it all so if you look at uh by the way here's a chart for his assassination so um, he was assassinated on January 22nd, 41. Um, so there is Caligula's Saturn at 2 degrees 12 Scorpio. And so Saturn was at 138 when he was assassinated by the, by the Praetorian Guard. You know, they had just uh, had enough of him. So I know that's a bad way to start. So let's look at someone else who is a Virgo. Well, what about Ivan the Terrible? Uh, opinions are mixed on Ivan the Terrible. I think Stalin quite admired Ivan the Terrible, and I think in Russia many people do admire Ivan the Terrible. Ivan the Terrible was a strong, was obviously a strong ruler who um, who took his role very seriously. Uh, he has, there's his uh, son conjunct Mars. So his Virgo was touched by Mars and he was not in the, in the tradition of Caligula quite. I mean, he was into being a serious czar. There's a story about Ivan the Terrible, which I think is untrue, by the way. It's not true, but apparently Ivan the Terrible had just had his architect build, um, this cathedral, this wonderful cathedral. And Ivan the Terrible asked the architect, um, so could you just build another one just like that? And the architect thought about it and he said, yeah. And so, and then so Ivan the Terrible promptly had his eyes ripped out. Reason being because he didn't want to have someone who could, he wanted this cathedral to be the one and only the perfect one he didn't want an architect who was capable to, of building another one it is not true by the way but it nonetheless gives us it's kind of fits the virgo pattern doesn't it perfection he wants things to be perfect and if things are not perfect then uh 
then Virgo might be able to go crazy. And I suppose, but Virgo is about really perhaps understanding the instruments of power. Virgo sees what power is all about, maybe. Maybe Caligula as well. They Understanding it, understanding the details of physical power and perhaps what needs to be done in order to maintain physical power. And I suppose if you're a Virgo who is a dictator or a Caesar or a Tsar, you're going to be hyper-focused on, on details and all the ways in which you might lose your power. You might start to... Th- because if you if you are in the top job, you, you must go crazy in the end. I mean, anyone would go crazy. But you 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 start to speculate. Uh, what does that person mean? Maybe that person is plotting, and so perhaps power may make Virgo go crazy. Now, someone else who had a huge amount of power, who was actually a contemporary of Ivan the Terrible was uh, Queen Elizabeth I. Now, Queen Elizabeth I, there's her son, 24 Virgo, she was, of course, known as the Virgin Queen. Uh, she didn't marry. She didn't, she didn't have any children. And she was, she had the son in Virgo. And with her, her son in Virgo, she was certainly... I suppose, like anyone else who who is right at the top, was very aware of plotting, and her a lot of her reign was about dealing with people who might undermine her. Um, so, a lot of people got executed in the reign of um, Queen Elizabeth. Not so much because of her, but it was more about her advisers. Her advisers were quite paranoid, and under. Under Queen Elizabeth I, she had a very effective intelligence service. The British intelligence service under her was really, really good. Um, someone connected with it was the sort of astrologer and magician, was John D. Of course, John D. used the code for himself 007, and so the 007, James Bond 007, actually came from John D. Who did have some involvement, I think, in English intelligence at the time of Queen Elizabeth I. But you can perhaps see that paranoia there, but also she understood the details of what had to be done. If it had to be done, it had to be done. You know, like when um, Mary Queen of Scots, Scots, who was constantly causing problems, uh, Queen Elizabeth actually never met her, I don't think, but in the end, Queen Elizabeth ordered her execution because it had to be done because that's the way it is. You, you, you know, you, you, you've got to stay in power. So that might be how Virgo works. But we shouldn't forget with Queen Elizabeth that she's a woman. So maybe son in Virgo, she's better able to project that son in Virgo. So that son in Virgo was perhaps lived out by her advisors. Um, uh, what's his name? Is it Cecil? Uh, but he had... The, she, you know, her, her people, was it Lord Cecil? I'm sorry, it's a long time since I've studied um, Tudor history. Um, uh, but her perhaps rather paranoid advisors focused on det- focusing on details were the ones who told her what to do. She didn't want to execute Mary Queen of Scots. Her advisors did. So perhaps Queen Elizabeth I was sort of projecting that out on her advisors. But... Uh, you know, if you, if you, you know, concerned that I'm giving, being negative about um, Virgos, Queen Elizabeth I, the Virgin Queen is regarded as being one of Britain's, or England's best monarchs. And when you, know, you saw the flowering of the English Renaissance, and it was, um, it, it was where Britain really came into being uh, under her reign. So that's... Uh, that's Queen Elizabeth I, who was sort of interested in intelligence and the sort of power and control um, intelligence. Here's someone else you you may not have heard of. Uh, well, you probably have if you're Russian or Polish. And that's uh, Felix. George, let's pronounce this right. Felix. George, God, I messed this one out. Felix Jerzynski. Sorry about that. Iron Felix is what they called him. I was used to be able to pronounce that word, Jasinski, but I'm, I'm failing right now. So 
Felix Jasinski was a basically a Polish nobleman, a minor Polish nobleman. And he, because that was a time when Poland was part of the Russian Empire and he got involved with the Communist Party, even though he was a minor Polish nobleman. And he is famous or infamous for setting up the Cheka. So the Cheka was the forerunner of the KGB. So the Cheka morphed into OGPU, which morphed into NKVD, which morphed, morphed into the KGB, which finally morphed into the, I think, the FSB. So the whole so Soviet Russian security system was founded by Felix Jasinski. And it was very effective, but it was incredibly brutal. And I think perhaps we're seeing more evidence for here. He, he, there's his son in Virgo, Opposition Saturn. But there can be a paranoia around Virgo and really focusing on details. If you want to stay in power, you really have to know what's going on. And you cannot leave any stone unturned. And, of course, that paranoia can get completely out of control and you can get the purges and so on. But uh, I suppose in his own way, he was... Uh, he was quite effective. Um, so turning to other Virgos, uh, Prince Harry. <laughs> Prince Harry is a Virgo. One wonders what Harry would have been like if he had been a medieval despot with his chart. But I suppose Harry in his own way, Prince Harry, does have, does have a son in Virgo and... He he does focus perhaps on the wrong kind of details. He doesn't let go, does he? And I suppose if you think about his his novel, not what is it a novel? I don't know. His book Spare, which of course it was ghostwritten, but if you look at the details that he goes into, this sort of immense sense of details, his physical details, sexual details, uh, the details of how many. Taliban he claimed to have killed there's a, there's a lot of details there and I think that in terms of Harry's complaints it's just it is actually a ton of detail isn't it and and I think that the sort of despotic side to Prince Harry you know he why he wants to shut down the press I mean that's a big thing he doesn't he what his crusade against the British press and I think it's kind of quite fortunate that Prince Harry is uh living in the 21st century and is not the monarch or not in line to the monarchy because you know I have a feeling that if Prince Harry with that chart and his experiences was living in say the 16th century I don't know I think he could have been quite a monster actually that's just a thought I just occurred to me when I was comparing Prince Harry um, with all of these uh, other people now talking about UK, the UK we have Keir Starmer now Keir Starmer is uh, he seems to be turning into quite a despot now, doesn't he? At least that's my understanding of what's going on in the UK. There is his son conjunct Pluto in Virgo. He kind of fooled us all, didn't he? Uh, son conjunct Pluto is about power, and he's a lawyer, perhaps using the law to maintain power. And so when he has a threat to the state with the you know civil unrest... Um, I suppose people can be concerned about immigration and um, I suppose the civil unrest could take other forms. He's using the law, sun in Pluto, and he's to, to, to keep control. And he's, and he said, he gives his speech saying, you know, if you do this, you will, if you, if you write, you will regret it. And, uh, you know, you will go to prison. And so you've got this Virgo, You've got this Virgo prime minister who is, I think he really is showing his Virgo side. But it's OK, it's not just Virgo. I suppose the sun, the sun is in the sun is conjunct Pluto. And um, that makes him perhaps quite obsessed with being in control. We didn't see it. We were perhaps fooled by it. But now he's prime minister. We're perhaps seeing his uh, true colours. But I don't have his uh, time of birth. And... Uh, uh, turning to France, Jordan Bardella has a son in Virgo. We don't know how this is going to work, but uh, I would guess that if Jord Jordan Bardella 
given what we know about people who you know once they're in, once they've got their son in when son in Virgo once they are able to take control um they can I think he could be quite a problem if he took power I'm not make as I said I'm not making any comment about his his politics about what he believes in but a man who has sun in Virgo opposition Saturn and and, and conjunct Venus so Venus is combust there so if if Bardella actually became French president um I think he would want to uh, he w- he would want to be a strong president and I I wonder how concerned he would be with you know people's freedom and so forth he may take the view as a son in Virgo that this is necessary who knows what France is going to be like I mean he's young you can imagine in 20 years time France falling apart chaos anarchy whatever Jordan Bardella becomes French president he would do whatever it takes um to maintain power to maintain his power and i suppose being a virgo he would be very aware of threats to his power i'm not saying that's a good or a bad thing i'm just just saying that uh t- looking looking at his chart i would like to look at more virgos but i'm going to finish with a virgo who you might not have heard of you might actually have heard of him if you're in the uk so he is his name is Stephen Russell and he went by the name of the barefoot doctor and I think he might have had a column in the observer or was it the guardian one of the guardian group of newspapers where he would talk about healing and he was an acupuncturist and he was something of a guru in his own way and there was a time where I I sort of I did know him and I'd, so this is a chart this is a chart of someone who is um was a good, he died oh, he died in his late 60s um a few years ago and he has he has son, he has a son in virgo uh and so son in virgo can just be about healing and he was an incredible healer um he didn't have any medical qualifications but uh I, I had acupuncture by him. He, just his words. Someone. This is someone who his his very every word was healing. Uh, I, I was really stressed out once, and I he gave me acupuncture, and it totally totally fixed the problem. I've had acupuncture from people who have had qualifications, and they weren't particularly good. But he had the healing touch, and so this is something you can see with the sun in Virgo. And on another occasion. Uh, I had acupuncture. He was telling someone else to give me acupuncture, and she, I was. And this friend of mine, she she under his guidance, she stuck a needle right between my eyes, and immediately I just sort of I was really stressed out because I was um, I was trying to write a book at the time, and I was it was when I at the time when I got a publishing contract in the nineteen nineties, I was completely stressed out. And she stuck this needle between my eyes and I just completely fell ill. And then I passed out. And when I came round, just attention had just disappeared. And so, yeah, he was a healer and he came over as being a great sort of humanitarian. But with Virgo, you always have to consider the sort of the hypocritical side of it. There is was a hypocrisy to him, even though he had he had the healing ability and you can see that uh, he sort of has sun semi-square Venus and he had Venus conjunct Saturn. And so in terms of his his relationship with his female clients, he got into all sorts of trouble. Um, he was reported to professional bodies for uh, breaking professional, you know, breaking the professional trust, having inappropriate relationships with his clients. And uh, that didn't really do him much good. And so that can be the, the sun in Virgo. Can There can be a certain amount of hypocrisy there. But you know, this doesn't take away from the fact that he was a... Um, he, he definitely had the healing ability, he, a total healer. He really knew it. Uh, but perhaps he misused his his abilities when it come when it came when it came to the opposite sex and that got him that got him into trouble but 
apparently women found him extremely attractive. Um, but there's that Venus conjunct Saturn. So that's just another way in which uh, sun in, the sun in Virgo can can work. All this is documented. I'm not saying anything. I mean, with his um, getting into trouble with professional bodies, it's there are reports in the press about it. So it's it's. Um, I'm not giving any away any confidences here. So uh, he was never a client, I should also say. Uh, so that's that's Stephen Russell, and that gives gives, gives an example of how Virgo um, might work. So uh, anyway, uh, I'd like to say more about Virgo actually, but I am uh, completely running out, run, completely running out of time. So. Um, Thank you very much for listening to me. If you found this video interesting, I would be very grateful if you were to like it. And if you're not subscribed, I'd be super grateful if you were to subscribe. And if you want to buy me a coffee, there is a link in the description. So thank you very much for listening. And I will talk to you again tomorrow.